So I decided for this evening we're going to have a little tomato education. These are just experiment because as you know, tomatoes, if you didn't know, tomatoes grow along the ground naturally. So having to prune them and stake them and do all of these things isn't necessary if we'd have tomatoes, but it does reduce, 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 right? Ha! <laughs> reduce diseases and pests and things of that nature so but I was curious to see how these would produce so tomatoes are actually monoecious I believe is how you pronounce it with its pollination which means the flowers contain both male and female parts in the same flower so if you're having problems with your tomatoes forming which sometimes I do and it could be because it's getting too hot. Maybe you have too much sun. You can remedy that by placing some shade cloth over during the hottest part of the day. Um, sometimes too much water. It's it's not really that difficult as it sounds to have to deal with it. It's usually something simple. You can try fertilizer, some phosphorus if you're having a lot of green growth. So here I have a good a bit of green growth on these tomatoes, which means my nitrogen is most likely on point. And if I'm not, if I'm having flowers or not having many flowers, I may need to add some phosphorus like bone meal. But you can also, whenever you have your pollinators, you can also mimic your pollinators by going over your flowers and you can gently shake your plant, which mimics the buzzing of bees or frill your fingers over the flowers. And that helps move the pollen down from here and into and make your fruit so that's some tips and now I'm going to I need to prune some of my tomatoes that I have staked up as you can see these girls are hot um, they're usually panting they're okay but they're getting through the hottest part of the day and I let them out to free range and they like to dust bathe which is another way of them cooling off too but anyway, back to the tomato plants. So this, so this is a Bosque Blue Bumblebee tomato, I believe. And I am excited. It is full of little tomatoes. This is the first time me growing it. But as you can see, it's pretty rowdy with all the rain. We haven't really been back here. But anyway, so what I want to do is find my strongest steak. And I really like just you can use anything from bamboo i've even used sunflowers st um, stem stalks that have dried as steaks you can use anything and i just get this some floral tape and some tape that you can get at Lowe's or anywhere that's stretchy and ties you know on amazon really cheap too um, but it's really helpful so I'm going to tie up my strongest part and then that will help me be able to locate and see what I want to trim. So here you can see I located, I actually undid one that I had before um, and took it off since I found a stronger and longer stem that I want to support as the main part of the plant. And if you see here, when you look at your plant and they call it the armpit, um, but basically you're going to have this sucker and you're going to want to pinch it off and that's it. And you can actually, if you want, they will make a whole new plant. And if you wait until they're big enough, like this one, if you can see right here is actually the sucker and it's pretty big, right? So what I'm going to do, and as you can see, the sucker actually did make some flowers. So you can actually put this in the ground, in a pot, in your garden, anywhere, or a vase and root it. And it will give you a whole nother tomato plant and extend your harvest. So, but that's what I plan to do with this one. So it's okay if you have suckers and you let them grow. You can take them off. You can leave them if you want. I am most likely going to just leave this one because it's already so big. And I'm not having any problems with disease or pests right now. So, um, but as you can see, 
it's pretty bushy right here so I'm going to want to allow some airflow in here and I'm going to look for any other suckers like this one right here so again you can just stick this in the ground or a vase and it's going to root or you can just toss it to your pigs or the compost heap so usually what I do when I prune is that I'll just leave it in the garden bed that way it becomes compost if I don't see any types of diseases on it so see this one isn't touching the ground so I'm not worried about it but if you see back here I have quite a few tomato like this one's touching the ground this is a great area that could give you some pests to climb up or um, any type of fungal diseases especially with all the rain we've been having and I will it's not diseased so I'm just gonna throw it off to the side and it'll become a part of the garden again and if you see here this is a rather large sucker that I've allowed but I'm going to leave it and I'm going to trim the lower branches off and just stick them to the side and that's basically it you just want to make sure that um, you don't have to go crazy pruning it. It may help your plant um, have a growth spurt. I don't think that it really affects you having fruit or any of those things that comes from your soil, pollinators, and just weather. That it's just a perfect balance. But yeah, so that's it. Also, when you plant your tomatoes, especially if you do plant your suckers, I'm not going to in this bed. I'm just throwing them to the side to naturally compost in here. But I call it hungry eyes, where we have these little plants. And a lot of us are famous for doing that when we're planting young trees. We tend to overlook the fact that trees get really big and we want to plant them close together and then realize in 15 years that I probably shouldn't have planted them that close. So tomatoes are similar. I like to leave at least a foot and a half between my plants. And it seems like you're wasting a lot of space, but really what you're doing is you're saving your plant from having pest damage, funguses, and feeding different problems. Um, so you want to prune your plants so that they're not so bushy like this one because moisture will stay in the center especially with the humidity and different types of mildews the fungus and pest will enjoy living in there and they'll probably destroy your fruit or it will destroy your plant so having a little bit less hungry eyes whenever you're planting will help you have more a more productive tomato plant this is also my garden trash to treasure tip that I like to do um, if you feel that your soil because you don't want to feed your plants you want to feed your soil that will feed your plant so what you can do is any type of jugs coffee creamer containers anything you put the appropriate amount of water, your fertilizer. I like to use fish fertilizer for the nitrogen boost. Um, you can basically make compost tea, which is really awesome. And you just poke some holes in the bottom, fill it up, and you don't have to sit here and worry about it. Just leave it next to your plant. Fill it up and move it on to the next one and go about your day. So we're just doing random tomato tips as I work on my tomato plants. Um, so another thing you can add when you first plant them and then when they start to flower is about, I want to say a tablespoon per tomato plant with your water of Epsom salt. Um, supposedly they help your tomatoes with a sweeter fruit and it also gives a magnesium boost. Um, which is necessary in the southern areas. Again, with all the rain and humidity, a lot of the nutrients, especially nitrogen, is famous for um, 
getting washed through the soil and your plants use it pretty rapidly once it gets really hot. So it's good to do those types of amendments to your soil. These are called super fantastic tomatoes and this is the first time I've grown these and they're doing really, really well with production. I'm also going to show you my first pest that I've noticed on my tomato plants that you really want to get rid of very, very quickly because they are the most destructive for tomato plants and that is the tomato hornworm. So I'm going to show you a bit of that. You'll notice that your plant will be missing a lot of leaves and if you don't see the tomato hornworm, which looks like something out of Alice in Wonderland, it will, I promise you, be somewhere near unless a bird got it. Um, but here I'm just going to prune it off and throw it off somewhere to the pigs and let them enjoy the whole process. The Hunger Games. This is another cool thing about the tomato plant. When you start to notice this, this isn't a disease or anything. It's actually roots. Because like we discussed earlier, tomato plants naturally crawl across the ground. So this is where it will root and make a new plant. You don't have to trim this off. Um, for instance, let's see, over here I had some damage um, during the rain and storm that came with some wind and it actually tore the branch, but it's healing back. But because of these roots, you could actually just go ahead and cut this off and plant it in the soil or put it in a vase until it roots again and you'll have a whole new tomato plant. So really cool, isn't it? Oh, and then after fooling with tomatoes, when you start to notice brown and black on your fingers, this is called tomato fingers. But it's proof to the world that you've been working hard in your garden. You just wash it off with some soap. And look, a baby corn. This is about the time that you're going to want to use pesticide, unfortunately, unless you like corn full of worms or donating a lot of your corn to your worms. You can use, I've used actually cooking oil. You just place it here um, in the silk or you can spray BT. Just be careful about your bees. Um, I've seen them throughout different times of the day. So whenever your pollinators aren't really around is a good time to spray. Um, so it usually lasts until it rains or you water your garden. And if not, you'll start to get all types of worms and bugs in there and then they have a feast on the inside so and y'all it might look unsightly whenever you have different grasses and what we know, call weeds growing around your garden but look how beautiful I believe this is stratus and it is a native wildflower that grows here in South Louisiana this is what your pollinators are looking for. They're looking for their natural habitat. So if you're planting all these non-native flowers and not seeing very much, that's probably why. So don't be afraid to just let something grow right here. I mean, who decides what's beautiful or not, right? We do. So I want tomatoes and I want watermelons and cucumbers being pollinated. So let the weeds grow. They have a beautiful purpose. So if you start to see this black dusty stuff on your leaves, that is caterpillar poop. And this is what happens if you let your plants get really crazy with this nitrogen boost, which actually is natural in the rain too, FYI, but not pruning them will leave to, as you can see, I have found my problem right there. I believe that's a baby army worm and having all of these leaves cluster together gives them a comfortable safe home so what i'm going to do yeah see right there what i'm going to do is prune all of the dead leaves off which is going to help me make sure that i get any of their eggs and any of them 
off the plant. And this isn't just tomatoes, this is really for any type of plant. So now that I've considerably cleaned up my plant from those wee baby army worms, um, I'm going to just use a neem oil and spritz my plants to take care of anything that I've missed. And you can try to stay organic. I mean, that is the best way to go. Neem oil comes from the neem plant seeds and it's rather powerful and it is organic, which doesn't make it safe all of the way. But if you have to use pesticides in your garden to get some type of produce so that you don't tire of gardening, then I personally say it's okay because it's still a lot better than eating what's in this drawer. So I really want to take care of these tomatoes, especially since they're Amish paste and they have so many little baby tomatoes and I want to take care of them. So, but the leaves that I did cut off that had the army worms those are not going to go in the compost. Those are I'm not going to leave in the beds because I don't want them to the problem to continue to spread. So I am going to let my chickens have at it and take care of the issue for me. And then I'm going to collect the leaves and just throw them away or burn them. Random, I know, but I didn't get to show you the grapes. They are doing amazing as Catawba grapes. And we just let it grow. I know it's wild. I'm sorry. We just let it grow all the way around our pig enclosure. But they are producing and are so amazing to see this. It's so amazing to see this, guys. So you take care of your garden and it takes care of you. So um, another tip is that you do not have to allow your tomatoes to be completely bright Christmas red um, because this will also signal to squirrels and birds and raccoons and rabbits that dinner is ready. So all you have to do is when they're starting to blush, taste exactly the same in my experience. Maybe yours is different, but put them on your windowsill, leave them outside on a porch where nothing can get to them. They'll ripen rather quickly. I want to talk to you a little bit about John 15 too on our peach tree. I love how our creator leaves little reminders of his lessons and presence and just everyday things. So in Hurricane Ida, we were waiting for this peach tree to mature its fruit and half of it was broken and we had to prune a lot of it off. So it has just this one big branch and just this awkward side and we decided to leave it we were going to completely destroy it and then this year it decided to start to make peaches so all along and this reminds me of john 15 too when god tells us that he prunes off any branches that do not bear any fruit and the ones that do he prunes it so that it'll bear even more fruit. Isn't that amazing? And you know what? Just a little time ago, just a few months ago, there was no new growth it was just one big old branch and before we know it these branches these young branches here will be just as strong as the main and will bear fruit and then this long one will be cut off and will make more branches like this so that it bears even more fruit I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed my random little lessons here. God bless you. Bye.